There you go. We're recording. We're at uh, another place in the garden. The view you're looking at is uh, part of our vegetable garden and a little bit of flowers just for the heck of it. I'm sitting on where I used to do some observing, a small cement pad. It's about nine in the morning and you're going to hear neighbors and motorcycles and uh, birds amongst other things. I was thinking the other day of uh, Ivory Island. Now Ivory Island is a lighthouse on the north coast of British Columbia, Canada. It sits in Millbank Sound and if you look east of the next stop you're going to find once you get out of Millbank Sound is Japan pretty much. The nearest neighbor was uh, the lighthouse keepers on McInnes Island. There were two lighthouse keeper families on both islands. Uh, they quit letting you go crazy alone on lighthouses a few years back. And it was a beautiful place. Uh, we were out on a point on an island uh, that was just a little off the mainland. A, a deer would uh, swim from the mainland to our island without a problem, so would wolves. We had them both show up. But the funniest thing that ever happened, and it had to do with the location as much as anything else and some incredible timing, was the emu feather. Emu is anybody, well, as you may or may not know, Emus are South American ostriches, basically. Now, one day, I went to the back of Ivory Island. There was a boardwalk that you could go back for exercise. There used to be a boathouse there. Uh, it had got torn down or washed away. But it was a nice walk, and it was enjoyable. There was also a little freshwater creek that would run out after a good rain. And one day, there in the freshwater creek, was a big feather. Bigger than an eagle feather and looked like an ostrich feather that ladies used to wear in their hats, only it was darkish black. And I plucked it out and I went back up the cross the island. I said, Dave, who was the senior keeper at the time, I said, Dave, look at what I found. He said, oh, that's amazing. I wonder what it is. I said, I don't know. But I think I'm going to find out. So I wrote uh, to the University of British Columbia. I described the feather, where we found it, and then I was kind of puzzled because I didn't think that any local animal would uh, have that type of feather. And they wrote back to me and they said, Dear Mr. Waddington, what you have by the sound of it is an emu feather, E-M-M-U, or one M, I don't know. And it may have got there in the following way. There was a fellow on the north end of Vancouver Island who kept an emu that escaped. And if the emu had managed to jump onto a, a, a boat or a, a barge being towed up the coast, he could also have jumped off and swam to your island and then to the mainland, which would be why you hadn't seen him which is just how you could have got that emu feather. Because this happened about a month ago that the, the bird escaped and he could have got there and that's how it could have happened. I wrote back and thanked them. So for the next three and a half, four years, when we had company, and we often had company, I remember the first time we had company, small aside here, we'd been on the light for about six months. Dave and his wife, Gloria, that was her name. We're at our house. We each had our own house. Uh, a little bungalow. Two bedroom with a basement. Uh, for uh, spaghetti dinner. And we're sitting there and we just sat down and we're digging into what I made was a pretty good spaghetti. When all of a sudden, there's a knock on the door. And we all stop eating. We look up. We count everybody. <coughs> at the table, <coughs> excuse me folks, a little dry today. And then 
I get up and go to answer the door because we were all there, which meant we had company, which was the first time we'd had company in six months. Turned out they were from Ocean Falls. You know Ocean Falls, Dan. You were born there. Dan's my cousin, folks. Uh, but yeah, we've got company every now and again. And whenever they showed up, I'd tell them about this, and I'd show them the emu feather, and I'd da-da-da-da-da. And Dave would just smile and say, yep, that's the story, folks. Well, after about three and a half, four years, back to the main story, Dave transfers to uh, Scarlet Point. I think that was it. And another lighthouse, only this was down south, and he liked it, so he went. But just on the day he was leaving, he said, Brian, i got to tell you the truth now. And I said, oh, okay, what's up, Dave? He said, I planted that emu feather. It came from our duster. Well, I thought we'd see what you'd do with it. So for three and a half years, the joke carried on. It was marvelous. I thought it was great time. Now, Ivory, it was kind of like that. Now, well, I'll just add this, and then I'm going to shut this off. One of my jobs on Ivory Island was to operate the High Line winch. Now to get cargo in, your monthly groceries or whatever you needed for maintaining the light and what have you, the Coast Guard would send their ship down. Uh, they'd anchor where it was safe for the weather and then a, a long boat would come around to the front of the island and hang under the hook. Now, uh, and we'd lower it and pull cargo up. Now, we had a mast that was about 40 feet high. Oh, maybe a foot thick uh, steel pipe that was uh, safety lined into the island. And then from the top of that, a line ran down to a reef where they had drilled a hole. A uh, reef and extension of the island, but it, it was rocks they had done it into, not a reef. And it made a nice line. You would lower the hook, it would hit the, the block at the end, it would drop down. The, the boat underneath would hook up the cargo, you'd lift it up, pull it back, drop it onto the island, repeat process until all the, process, uh, the, the cargo was in. Well, the first time I'm doing it, the first one time on the light, the hook screwed up. It uh, the brake didn't work. So when I it hit the block at the end, the hook went straight down and into the water. And uh, until it kept going until it hit bottom, which was very rocky, and it got stuck. Which meant we could cut it and lose it, or I could try to jerk it off the bottom and take it up. Well, jerking didn't work, so I thought I'd just give it a strong, steady pull with my 10 horsepower diesel engine. And instead of the hook coming up, which was the intent, all of the safety wires on the uh, pole, the post, the tower we had, came out and I pulled the tower down. This was not looking good on my resume, but they didn't fire me, which was kind of nice. They were used to keepers doing silly things, I guess. Took a month or two to get everything fixed. And when they did get it fixed, it didn't work quite the way they wanted to. They needed a special bit, and they didn't have one in Prince Rupert. So a helicopter from Victoria flew up the special drill bit. And the drill came down from Prince Rupert uh, and all the accessories and a five-man work crew. So it got there and they drilled all the holes and then the uh, pins that were oh three feet, four feet long that they were going to hammer into the holes they had just drilled Two things went wrong. Nobody greased them so they wouldn't slide in, but even worse than that, the pins were one and a half inches wide and the drill bit was one and a half inches wide, so it wasn't going to fit in anyway. 
they flew up another bit. The five-man work crew stood to uh, lay around for two or three days until they could find it. The helicopter flew up again at $2,000 an hour. And eventually they got the pins in and the pole went back up and we got our cargo working. All in all, a rather interesting start to three and a half, four years on a lighthouse that was a beautiful time in my life. And as I'm prone to say at these times, I'm going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And that's the end of this video, fakes. Have a nice day.